Good, good. Now just look at me. And I think, Esco, when we were first talking, let's have a sort of an overall statement of what Waterworks is in the community and what you do here. Well, the Waterworks um, was founded in 1959, so we're celebrating our 59th year this year. And it is the anchor organization for the East Square Cultural Arts District here in Rowan County. All right, let's start that and not tell okay. me we're 59th year. Just say we okay. started in 1959 and we're, go ahead. Okay. We started in 1959 and we are the anchor organization. Let's start off with Waterworks. Okay. Waterworks was founded in 1959, and we are the anchor organization for the cultural. So, yep. Waterworks was founded in 1959, and we are the anchor organization for the East Square Cultural Arts District. The East what? Square Cultural Arts. What does Arts. that mean? <laughs> um, that means um, that. We have a lot of artist studios um, in the surrounding areas, and so we're the anchor organization um, for the cultural and visual arts here in Rowan so County. So you have the you have the museum and the galleries to showcase their art. Um, not necessarily. We we showcase the art of local and regional and national artists here, um, but we also have the opportunity to engage our local artists um, and support them through their careers. Great. Now tell me about the classes that you do here. Um, we offer adult and youth classes year-round. Um, in the summertime, we offer only children's classes for ages 4 through 18. Um, this summer, we'll offer 30 of those classes um, in a variety of media. How many kids come through or adults come through your hands every year? Um, we average between 24 and 25,000 visitors a year. That's great. And how many classes do you have? So we, let's have a sentence about we average this number of you know, visitors, this number of classes. Okay. Just give me a sort of a broad overall what you okay. serve. Um, we average 24 to 25,000 visitors a year. We offer education opportunities for adults and youth throughout the year. Um, I'm so sorry. Let's do that one again. Okay. But you're getting the idea. Yeah. Let's just try and flow so I can show some okay. of the art and we can just talk about what we do. Okay. Um, At Waterworks, we offer, we serve over 25. Yes. At Waterworks, we serve um, between 24 and 25,000 visitors a year. We offer adult and youth education classes. Um, and, and I'm so sorry. It's all right. This yeah. is not feeling natural. No, and then, okay. And there's galleries and there's all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Waterworks. <clears throat> Waterworks serves 24 to 25,000 visitors a year. We offer opportunities um, in studio art classes and workshops in photography, clay, and studio art classes. Um, we offer 12 adult classes each year. And in the summer, we offer 30 children's art camps. They're week-long art camps for ages 4 to 18. We also have a very active uh, student volunteer program in the summertime where students can actually get community service hours um, for serving as Waterworks volunteers. You have several galleries here. Tell us about the galleries. We have five professional galleries. Um, we're standing in the Woodson... Okay. No, okay. okay. All right. We have five professional... We have five professional galleries on the first floor, and we also have an outdoor sculpture garden where we um, do a rotating sculpture show. We actually host three major... Um, exhibition rotations each year, um, and we sh we show artwork by living contemporary artists. That was important. Yep. Okay, great. Let's start. Let's do that one at the beginning again, just about 1959. Waterworks was started in 1955. Um, 59. What's the what was the whole reason for being generated here? Okay, um, in 1959. Hmm. Waterworks was founded in 1959 by 26 visual artists who wanted to share their love of art and um, community. Waterworks was founded in 1959 by 29. Mm -mm. Waterworks was founded in 1959 by 26 visual artists who wanted to share their love of the art with the community and their fellow artists. Um, we started very small. 
Um, our first building was at the original Waterworks um, facility, um, about three blocks from here, and hence the name Waterworks, because it served as the city's Waterworks department. Um, we moved here in this building in 2003. This is a renovated automobile dealership. It was a Dodge dealership in its heyday in the 40s. And we had a capital campaign that raised $2.8 million to renovate the space into what it is today. I think that's good for me. Can you think of anything else? Do we, do we need to do, do we just, do we just think stop we, so people can just wander by? I mean, there's no charge to come in the galleries. Okay. And we have constantly rotating exhibits here. Um, you know, we welcome everyone in the community to stop by and, you know, just give me something about, you, you know, your openness and willingness to I'm going to try this, but we might want to cut it out, but well, let me just try this. Sure. Um, okay. Give me just a second. Sure. Accessibility at Waterworks is tremendously important to us. Art for everyone is more than a slogan, it's an intention. We are open six days a week, free of charge, so that means that we are accessible to every person in Rowan County in our region. Lovely. Or who wants to stop by, you know? Yeah, lovely. Okay. Do you want to try Did I say again? six days a week? You did? Okay. Do you want to try that again? Okay. Do it a little smoother, a little smilier? Okay. <laughs> Accessibility at Waterworks is tremendously important to us. Art for everyone is more than a slogan, it's an intention. We are accessible to everyone six days a week, free of charge. Lovely. Lovely. Very nice. Very nice. Well, that's great. Yeah. 
to get an egg. to do it for an egg spinner. 
Right, now give it a big spin. Take some muscles. Okay, now stop and let's see. We'll give it a <laughs> <laughs> now let's open. What do you think that Jaylee came up? <gasps> so it was spun around. Okay, let's give it one more squirt of, yeah, yeah, of pink. Okay, and then we're going to swirl it one more time. Everyone is having a chance. Okay, now, oopsie. Let's see what, what she came up with. Oh, wow. All right, Malachi, now you come. Where's your egg? Okay. Okay, there we go. I want to do another. A squirt and a squirt. That looks fun. All right, go go to it, Malachi. You got good muscles. Wait a minute, let me get it on here. Okay, give it a big spin. Gonna put Malachi's here. Try to remember. All right, who's next? All right, here we go. Yeah, would you see is there green over there? And maybe the yellow too. All right, put it in there. Can I try this All right, give it a big squirt. Like that? Try that green or the purple or not the okay. Uh, no, I think. What? Oh my goodness. Try that big old splat. Look. Okay, let's try this now. Oh. So using a salad spinner that you might not use at home. Uh oh. There you go. Get it on there. And give it a big spin. <laughs> oh, you're getting your whole body into it, okay? <laughs> Very good. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes adults have a, maybe a little more muscle power, but you're good, strong. Ooh. Ooh. Oopsie. <laughs> Do you see how it was spinning? Yeah. Okay, now this is yours. Okay, let's try to remember. Who's next? Okay, put it in there. How about? Nick, can I be next? Yes. Bonk. Some, green. Green. some green. We're out of the really? green, but you know, I That's bet we're going to have a mix fun. right here. after you get this all done. We got all the spokes the inside, then we're going to do something else with it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, come on. Where are we going? Huh? Julia. Julia. I need to get this one wet. I just got wet. Because the roots are soaked in water. Brad, the one time I put myself in the eye. Are you getting the wet? I was weaving the colored stuff and then it went boing. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody 
excited. What are you going to do with your basket? Looking good. Okay, let me get you a equipment. Now we have to find your two big ones. And this is going to be your handles, okay? And we're going to stick them down in between here. So you don't really see them unless you're really looking for them. Do you want yours kind of tall? Do you want your handles kind of tall? Or do you want them shorter? So do you want to count how many rows you did now? Four. Four. Now, what we're going to do. Yeah. One. Yeah. Can you see the words also work from the door? Mm-hmm. No, I can go shoot a close-up. Can't see it from here, obviously. Is that it?
then the first building on the other block. Okay. But about the river walk, the railwalk. The railwalk. Oh, no, right. keep saying riverwalk. The railwalk galleries, and so we're just going to we're giving people just an overview because we're teasing them to come in. Good. So we so we, we really don't want to tell them the whole story because okay. this, you know this month or next month that ga you know that gallery or studio space may be turned over to a different mm -hmm. you know artist. So. Uh, we don't want to highlight anyone particularly, but we want to give them a sense. This is available to, for you to come and see Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Sure. When you can visit Salisbury, the doors are open. The artists welcome you to come around and see their work and talk to them, and you know. Visit. Okay. There's a, I think there's something very personal about buying art from someone you know. Oh yeah. It's absolutely. a very different ex experience yeah. rather than buying something from. You know, just hung on the walls at Target or, mm -hmm. you know, at some commercial store. When you've met the artist, it makes a difference. So if you would kindly then tell us about this space and what's in this space for our, your visitors. Well, the Railwalk Gallery uh, contains uh, artist studios for nine different artists presently. And they, they mainly use this as a studio. They, <coughs> they do their work here. They are open to the public uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 11 until 4, and also, of course, will open by appointment. Uh, but uh, they're here, they're working artists. Uh, many of them have, have uh, credentials that have been here for a long time. Uh, others are new. We have some uh, who come uh, and take space and, and, uh, and do their thing right here. We, we, it's, it's a magnificent place, sort of an incubator for artists. And um, it's, it's been uh, very well received. We are an arts community, uh, as you may have discovered, and not just visual arts, but performing arts. And a lot of that goes on right here in Railwalk. Perfect to me. Okay. You smacked it. Yeah, that's exactly what I just said to me. I think you're going to stay for lunch. Yeah, we're good. And we'll be at the Railwalk Brewery, which is also yeah. part of Railwalk. Okay, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Bob's been working since 8 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Just bring that with you. We're doing a bit of reading still, that's not Yeah, well. And I don't mean reading, but, you know, we're doing a higher. Yeah. Hello. And she said she's going to come back. I read. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm you hold your hat. So this is a space of Sharon Fortifer, who's uh, with us here, explaining her artwork to some clients. She has been here, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how many years, but she's one of our longer uh, tenants. And, uh, does she, do she does. These are all. Beautiful. Um, Not a Yeah, she she has. And Sharon travels quite a bit. Sharon has a motor home, so they go all okay. across the country. And, and a lot of beautiful scenes of, on the water, too. Yeah. She does. Uh, she's yeah. got the uh, East Coast to, to Canada. Quite a bit She really does. She really, truly does. All right, we're going to walk into that space. We've got more portraits type over there. Okay, mm -hmm. Dad? How are you today, Sharon? Okay. And we'll end up at the portraits, okay? okay? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is quite different, isn't it? And this is the Marietta Smith's space. You met her earlier, and she is uh, one, one of our first. 
the oh, artist. Yeah. 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 I think that sort of thing is so hard to do in the colors. And I do a little watercolor and oil painting myself. Well, they do teach lessons up here too. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> and portraiture, so, of course. Yes. Most people have yes, one, just do one. There, it's a different set of brushes, it's a different set of you know, paints, mm -hmm. yes. the whole thing is different. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thomas is even over there, I was doing it. Oh, right. Last October, I was on Maui and saw these birds. And of course, here we have the red cardinals. And, and I thought, wow, that's really wild. I've not seen one of those. So I yeah, thought I'd paint one. Yeah, plenty of red cardinals. Yeah. gives you your best result, color-wise? Well, I'm not yeah. sure if I know what you're asking. Me. I don't know either. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm a color matcher, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to duplicate the color I see visually. Mm -hmm. and sometimes I hit it on the nose, sometimes I don't, but, uh, you know, you have to look at a color and go, well, that's light, and some colors are greener, there's a green spot. And some have more of an olive tone. To I them. think what I meant, like your salo blue and your <coughs> and what's the other blue? Ultramarine. I I prefer ultramarine. It's a cooler. It's a cooler uh, blue one. as opposed to thalo blue, which is a real. It's almost it gets almost this color when you blend it with mm -hmm. white. It's it's, it's a warm blue. <coughs> Yeah, you, Color. you, 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 really, you, get out of you really have to know your blues. Like there, I just mixed some pale and I'm looking for some different shades. Mm -hmm. Are you going to finish this today? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> if I stay through the night and into the morning, but I, this is m the way method I work. I, I paint around the subject itself, and then I'll finish. I'll finish with the uh, bird itself. Once I'm pleased with the outcome of the, uh, it's very graphic in nature. Yes, it is. I can see that. Yeah, we have a, we have a TV. You have a TV. Yeah. Oh. 
Well, we've got, you know, we've got a couple of TVs and that's kind of a computer, it's nice to be real, so you can touch your phones. Well, we've got, so we want to watch a movie, don't we? So Well, not in, in, not really in, well, it does. In the arts. Mm. I'll see what I can do. Focusing, okay? Mm. Hmm. Davis, tell us why Salisbury has such a long history in the arts. Well, it's very interesting. Um, we're actually on the site of what was an Indian village. There was a trading path established here well before the European settlers arrived. And it was chosen as the... Um, last seat of government in the colonial system in the colony. Rowan County was established in 1753 and the county seat was given the name of Salisbury after our sister city and namesake in Wiltshire two years later. And Stop. Yep. Okay, we're going to do it again. We're going to be shorter. Yeah. Which, which bit do you want me to cut out? <laughs> <laughs> Not cut out. Just We're just going to have to make it more concise. Um, just let's just try it again a couple of times. It doesn't matter. We're going to get the best. All right. So let's go down. You go down. It was established on an old Indian trail. Mm -hmm. Wait, the wagon, wagon trail, mm -hmm. wagon road, colonial, and so Wiltshire won't mean anything to the to our audience. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just try again. All right, Davis. Tell me why art is so important here culturally in Salisbury. Let's well, that again. Okay. Really, 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 go a little bit closer to it and really speak up, Julia, because I'm having You can't not hear me, yeah. okay. Sorry. Anytime. Davis, tell us why art is such an important part of the culture here in Salisbury. Well, it's interesting. Our culture goes back a very long way. Uh, Salisbury was established um, in 1753 as the county seat of Rowan, the very last in the in the colony. and. Uh, we had German and Scots-Irish immigrants here. They came down here for the climate, for the uh, availability of agriculture, and very soon after, we had artisans primarily in the form of cabinet makers that did fine work here in the 18th century, and their work is still coveted to this day. And then in the 1850s, in 1855, we got the railroad, and that really uh, put Salisbury on the map as a crossroads between the main north-south line running from New York to New Orleans and the western line that goes from here to Asheville. Then after the war, uh, we were poised for the uh, Industrial Revolution, lots of trade. We'd been a trading post by that point already a hundred years and there was an exuberant explosion of people who wanted to show that this was a real place, that uh, they wanted to make a statement. And a lot of our architecture here uh, speaks of that. And then we started getting theaters around the turn of the century. We have four theaters here in Salisbury now, which is a lot for the size of our town. We are the smallest municipality in the United States with its own symphony orchestra. And that's been going for over 50 years now. And so it's been a natural evolution for the last 250 years that has led us to the art scene we see in Salisbury today. Great bits out of that yeah, little pick. So that was some really great that bits out of that. No, 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 no. Of course you're going to do it. No, again. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> it won't be nearly as well the second no, time. No, no. I'm going to take bits out of that. But what I still need, I need you to get closer to me. Okay, I know it feels uncomfortable to be close. It's just. It I'm just worried about the light. I feel like I'm blocking the light on it's you. It's okay. Do you want to get? I might make you do it a couple of times. So you don't have to worry. Best is best. Yeah, we're good, Julie. And, okay. and your question was. My question is why here? Why in Salisbury? Well, Julia, uh, Salisbury has a very uh, old history. It was built on the site of an Indian trading village that was established here before the colonial settlers came. We had settlers from the Germany in the eastern okay, part. We've got that bit. You did that bit before. Forget about the Germans okay. and the English and the Scots and the Irish. Just it's here. Just, just here. Give me the physical layout. Why physically mm -hmm. it's here? Ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Salisbury is actually built on the site of an Indian trading village that was at a natural crossroads in this part of the country. 
and it was established, the county was established in 1753, and it was a... It was a... It, it was. was. It was the last colonial... I'll, I'll, that I'll, worked I'll, perfectly. Cut that, we'll do it again. I'm going to get this right. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. The blue, you have a, you keep them for a blue. Oh, great. I look forward to that so much. <laughs> he just said that to make me a little bit more nervous. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's a horrible thing to say. Okay. When you, when you start off, just say Salisbury instead of uh, Salisbury, if you would. Thanks. That was good. You were doing great. Salisbury was established. We're rolling. Salisbury was established on the site of an Indian trading village that had been here for centuries before the European settlers. It was the last seat of colonial government under the English system, founded in 1753. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. And once the railroad came in in mm -hmm. 18... So do that bit again. Do you want to talk about the, the railroad to me. You don't want the cabinet makers. No. No cabinet, because we're not going to be showing cabinets. All right, fair enough. This is only what we're going to be seeing on this piece. So no cabinet makers. So Indian Village, Salisbury Colonial, and the railroad comes to... So I can to start a, with the railroad? No, you're not starting with the railroad. You're going to start with the Indian Village. i got to do that all over? Yes, you do. Oh, God. All right. Because you're good. You can look at me and you can do it. I want your very best. Anytime you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Salisbury was established on the site of an Indian trading village that had been here for centuries before the European settlers arrived. It was established as the last seat of colonial government in 1753. Then by the time 1855 rolled around, we got the railroad, which only expanded our trade and ability to move things around. We're on the main north-south line that runs between New York and New Orleans, and the Western North Carolina Railroad breaks off here that goes all the way to Asheville. You want to do it one more time? I don't. I do know you? you do, but I can edit it. But if you want to do it again... Don't ask you. I feel like a stutter. You did? I can no, fix it. it. We can fix it. You tell me if you've got what you I'd need. I'd love you to do it one more time. One more time, time just for I you? I think you now got it and you know what you're going to say. And Bob, now Bob's going to mess up. I'm going to. But you got it now. now. That's Thanks. absolutely perfect, and I can use that. Mm -hmm. Just if you want it for your own head, just to get it out, and just to do it one time or do it twice. I don't care. Oh, fair enough. What I want your best. You ready? Mm -hmm. Salisbury was established on the site of an Indian trading village that had been here centuries before the European settlers arrived. It was along what was known as the Great Wagon Road that came down from Pennsylvania, where lots of the settlers came. In 1753, Rowan County was established as the last seat of colonial government under the English system. Then, by 1855, when the railroad came through, we were very well poised to be a trading center for this whole part of the state and the region beyond all the way to the west. I like that one even better. Does that mean I can... Listen okay, to the end let's of it. do it. Okay. Let's do it again. <clears throat> it's Salisbury. Mm -hmm. Salisbury was established on the site of an Indian trading village. It was the last seat of colonial government established by the Crown in 1753. It was uh, along what was known as the Great Wagon Road that came down from Pennsylvania mainly. And I can't remember what else I'm supposed Sorry, to say. I love that. It's about the railroad. Okay. So this is the Crown. No. Just kidding. It's George. No. George. Right? George II. We're good. Second. Start all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do it. You've got it. Okay. You know it. Salisbury was established in 1753 as the last seat of colonial government going west. It was on the site of an Indian trading village that had been here for centuries before the European settlers arrived. It was a natural trading part of this con this part of the state. Let's start it again. Hmm? Let's start it again. Whole thing? Assembly. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting this because I'm getting more nervous as I'm we go along. Anytime you're ready. Look at Julia before you say Salisbury. Just okay. look right at her and then go ahead and start. Anytime. Salisbury was established on the site of an Indian trading village that had been here for centuries before the European settlers. It was the last seat of colonial government established, and it was a natural part of the trade for this whole part of the region. 
Therefore, when the railroad came through in 1855, we only expanded that trading capability, not only on the north-south line that runs here from New York to New Orleans, but also going west all the way to Asheville. Lovely. Somewhere in all that, you Somewhere probably have something. You, you sure? Move. Use the word art and move on. We're good. Are you good? Mm -hmm. So after the Civil War, that you know, because yeah, after the Civil War, after the Civil War, so really you're talking about the turn of the 20th century, mm -hmm. aren't you? So really, it, from the 1870s to uh, let's say World War One, that was our big boom time. We didn't call it the Golden Age, did we? Something like that, the Gilded Age, I Gilded think, but that sort of has a negative connotation, you might know. Yeah, and it's not, it wasn't really Gilded, this was still an agricultural, this wasn't Gilded. Well, it was a lot of trade. Saying here. And just, and then, you know what I mean? Uh, just I think I can, you, let me see what I can do, yeah, and then you, you can see. correct me. Are you ready? Ready. So after the Civil War, Salisbury was naturally poised to take advantage of the railroad, the people that it brought in, the trade in this area, and they very much wanted to establish themselves as an important place in the growth of the state. This is reflected in the exuberance of architecture that came out of that period, followed by the arts, the theater, and everything else that made it a real city for people coming here from all over. Okay. Didn't like it. No, I, I want to end with the arts. That's, you know, and the arts really rose to prominence in the community. Mm -hmm. I just want you to give me something that ends with the arts so I can... Got to do that whole bit all over again. Uh, let me think how I want to tie that in because... Um, uh, start with the Civil War again. Yes, please. So, after the Civil War, Salisbury found itself poised to take advantage of the trains, the trade routes, everything. We very much wanted to establish ourselves as an important place. And this is reflected in the architecture of the time. It was a very vibrant community. And soon thereafter, you had hotels, restaurants, theaters, all of this was building upon the arts that had been established here very early on. Therefore, in the 20th century, this explosion in the arts that we see here now is, is more of an evolution that's taken place over a period of time. I like that last bit. That's good. That's, I can use that. I can, cut from the, I can cut from that first bit and, and I like mm -hmm. you know, when you come to all, you know. But that'll be later in production, your voiceover. Or oh, yes. There yes, won't yes. be any audio from here on out. No. Yeah, for that. Um, <laughs> and I think if you just say everything from fine 19th century. I did thank you for um, the Glen. Yes. Yeah, was, and you've got. the right person to give him. He was I, I know. Well, I'm, that we have billionaires in Salisbury. We have more money for the size of this town than most places in the country. Let's go interview Well, I, one of them just died, or I could have. Um, but yeah, it's the money that has enabled a lot of this to happen. I didn't really want to say that, yeah, but you get the point. Yeah, yeah. It's good for background. For Set the state, you know, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, you asked me to spell out specifically, first of all, how to spell my name, and secondly, <laughs> you wanted a title. Well, I'm the proprietor of this, yes. Old Sarum Gallery, yes. and I'm the Vice President of the Arts Council, which I'm fairly certain is no. finally, You're finally. Off. finally. You can't. I, they, they've they've already rewritten the bylaws to extend me by two years, so I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Yes, well, please come in. Now that seemed natural. <laughs> Let's see how well we do. You've got to attack Okay. All right. All right, so here we go. I'm ready to see my little shop. Yeah, I am, absolutely. Okay. You, you ever been to Newcastle? We're headed your way in just a minute.
you're listening. Every time you can, all our visitors, we want them to pick up the Salisbury sculpture brochure. I need to find out though how I started without saying welcome to Salisbury, Dan. You, just you, talk to Julia. Just we'll tell me. Julia. Okay, Barbara, tell me about the sculpture show that you have every year here in Salisbury. Every year since 2008, we. You I'm have sorry. To, sorry, honey. You got it. You can't close your eyes. Just I know. Right you. You and see, look at her. and I'm looking around because I'm Don't talking. Look around. Okay, I know. All look right. at me. Tell, <laughs> tell, tell Julia. Right tell now. me. All right. Okay. Hang on one second. One more time. Sorry. No, no, Might more be than 20 times. <laughs> Any time. Tell me, tell me about the sculpture show here in Salisbury. Every year since 2008, uh, the Salisbury Public Art Committee has done a sculpture show. It is in every part of the downtown. It's a walking tour, and we have sculptures from not only North Carolina, but from many states in the southeast who come and show their work. Is that not That's right. good for me. Mm -hmm. I okay. just That's want... That's it? I don't... No, oh. no, you're okay. not finished. <clears throat> We're going to get you to do it again and just okay. say downtown, like around every corner, there's over 20 okay. sculptures and you're going to be looking at me. But okay. they're not 20 downtown. No, so just in the just area. Just say in the and area. Downtown. Okay. <clears throat> 
Perfect. So add that or do it. Yes, let's just it. do it from the beginning. Okay. Let's just have an Now option. I don't even know how I started. Then you need to be looking at me. I know. Every year since it turns out that we have a juried art show of sculpture. You'll see them around every corner. Okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Every year since 2008, the Salisbury Public Art Committee has had a sculpture show. There's, it's all over the downtown. There can be 15 to 20 sculptures. And we have to stop, sorry. No babies are crying, the bells have stopped. <laughs> okay. Every year since. All right. Every year since 2008, the Salisbury Public Art Committee has put on a sculpture show. It's in the downtown, uh, mainly in the downtown. It's a walking tour and we have 15 to 20 sculptures each year that are juried and come, the artists come from North Carolina and many states in the southeast. I love that. Now yeah. tell me something else you want me to tell wait, me about. Come to Salisbury, there'll be something different to look at and enjoy. Okay, so add that or... Right. Yes, just do that. Add that One line. line. That'll be lovely. <laughs> Every time... Let's do the whole thing again. Oh, Bob wants to do the whole thing. Oh, yeah, we have some chimes going on. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to look at her. See, I could do better if I was just walking around no. and using my hands, yeah. you see. We want to approach you. Okay, all right. <laughs> How did we start every off? Every year since okay. Jupiter. Just look at Every me. year. So, oh, sorry. wait a minute. Look right at Jake. Have your eyes open when you start talking to her because you're going to use you right Okay. Now. Okay? Every year since 2008, the Salisbury Public Art Committee has had a sculpture show in the downtown area. Sculptors, artists come from all over the state and the southeast to show their work. We have a jury show from 15 to 20 uh, sculptures, and it is a walking tour. And every year that you come, something different will be for you to see in all areas. And I don't believe that's, I that's like it. that. That's not every every time you come to Salisbury. Every uh, time you come to, to Salisbury, Salisbury, there will be something. See, I can't remember what to say. I told you. How many times did you do one? <laughs> I hope so, because this would be my fourth one. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. <clears throat> okay, am I in the right spot? Looking at her nose. Right. Okay, or eyes. Okay, you tell, are you ready? Ready. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I forgot how we started. Wait a minute. How did we start? Every year. Every year, okay. the Salisbury Public Art. Sorry, mm -hmm. I stopped. I stepped okay. on Okay, excuse me. Every year, the Salisbury you're looking at me when you start. Oh, I right did? Oh, you. okay. There Excuse me. Thanks. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> Every year, the Salisbury Public Art Committee puts on a sculpture show. We have artists come from the state of North Carolina as well as uh, artists from the uh, southeastern states. We have a walking tour, uh, and each time you come to Salisbury, you will see something different. It's a jury show, and I don't really know what else I'm supposed to say. It's okay. Stop, 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 stop for a sec. Woo! Ooh, <coughs> relax. It's us. We only want your best. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Every year since 2008, the Salisbury Public Art Committee has had a sculpture show. It's a walking tour in the downtown area. We have artists from across the state and from the southeast who bring their work. Um, we, you can pick up, when you come to Salisbury, you can pick up a brochure from the Visitors Bureau, the public library, businesses, and take the tour because every year it's a different thing to see, a different thing to see. Well, so, I can clip this. Hey, just, I'm going to say do, a bad word. No, no. You just do me. I'm just give me. A, I can cut this. So why don't you say to me? And every year there's something new and fun to look so at. So could I just do that? Okay. Just do that. Okay. All right. Every year there's something fun and beautiful to see. So come visit Salisbury. I think we've got it. I can get it. All right, buddy. Be just real quiet for a little bit. Not so.
Toby. Tell you what, let me hold that. And could you please retrieve yes. her microphone? Oh, I forgot. I would be walking off <laughs> with your microphone. I didn't. Uh, a little over a year and a half now okay. and didn't think it'd make it that far yeah to be honest with you it was they don't write a book on a business like this you know so I guess we're going to <laughs> would you kindly state and spell your name first and last for me yes it's uh, Timothy Demers spelled T-I-M-O-T-H-Y last name D-E-M-E-R-S pronounced Demers and you're a co-owner of all the Yes, guys. me and my wife. You and your wife. Yeah. Why did you start this? Team? Well, uh, we saw a lot of opportunity here in Salisbury. And we were homeless when we got here due to my TBI injury. So with the opportunity that we saw, we, uh, well, we took advantage of some of the opportunity with very, very little money. Bought us a, an old house. Um, and with, since we don't have a house payment and we both work full time, we were like, let's do something good. Because it's we're humanitarians when it comes down to it, and uh, that's what we did. And since this helped me so much through my TBI recovery and continued recovery, um, just wanted to share it. It was really like saying, "Hey, I make the best hamburger in the world, but how's anybody going to taste it if I don't have some ready?" <laughs> that's what this was really. How did you find out about this kind of therapy? Um, would you call it therapy? Excuse me. I would. It, it started. Uh, early as a child with developing some anger issues and and uh, I had a really hard time with it but I've always remembered when I lashed out I instantly felt better until I recognized the effect of my actions and through life what the effect it had on other people um, I needed a way to get it out and now that my profession as a, a motocross racer uh, a jouster now that I can't do that anymore, I had to figure out a safe way out because I needed to maintain my support system, my wife, my family, now my community. And uh, I didn't want anybody to see that part of me. So this is really, I would call it self-medication in a positive way. So being in our old house that we purchased, I got to tear up a lot of stuff and I realized I feel great. I'm sleeping better um, and I didn't affect anybody. And this was while, you know, the wife and kids were at, were not at home. I would, I was able to belt out some four letter words, uh, tell the higher power what I was thinking and feeling. And it really did help and continues to do so. For the purposes and for the benefit of our audience, could you describe TBI to everybody? Traumatic brain injury. Um, I broke my skull open. Um, I literally died in my, my fiance's arms, which is now my wife, two weeks before we were to be married. Uh, and this was at work. Um, I was abandoned by the, my workplace uh, in the injury and they closed up shop. So I was fighting for my life for quite a while and learned so much along the way. Um, being humiliated is awful. But learning from that and learning people's behavior and how they may treat something or someone they don't understand helped me kind of understand 
their uh, perspective and how our, how our minds work sometimes. Um, because I was looked upon as somebody who was maybe struggling with drugs or addiction, um, having seizure in public, uh, having a drunkenness about me. And I've had people tell me that if I would just get a haircut and shave and get off the booze or whatever it is I'm on, I, w I would be in a better place. But they didn't know that I was going through what I was going through. So you had a physical injury that had this emotional, uh, just hugely emotional impact. Huge, on. huge. And then, you know, with having seizures in public and recognizing things and trying to be uh, in public was tough. So I did seek help. So I went to my PTSD classes, grief counseling. I know what it's like to feel like that you want out of this world. And I'm glad I pushed through because um, it was big. Who comes here to share that or to just relieve themselves? Who are your clientele? Human, human beings, real human beings. Just, that's, that's how I, that's how I think of them. We're all the same here. We're, none of us are going to leave here alive. And I, regardless of their, their professions or their thoughts on politics or religions, I ask that that's left at the door. This is a place that we're all treated equal and encouraged all the same. After they've had the experience of being able to express themselves, actually, let's talk about that first, I apologize. Sure. This, could you just step us through the process when somebody comes in here, you know, then they go to the back and they, you're talking to us about writing on a plate and so forth? Yeah, so, you know, when they're coming into a, a giant warehouse here, uh, they're, they're a little skeptical. So we bring them into this room here where they're met by my wife. Um, they're answered, well, we answer their questions and things like that and get them to sign a waiver because what they're doing is possibly dangerous. You could get cut or something. Mm -hmm. um, they also get to mean or learn the meaning of grievous, which is right behind me here. Um, this room has a soothing effect. It's a, it's a great way, or we thought it would be a great way to break them in slowly before, you know, the Willy Wonka of glass goes into the breaking area. But as they go to the breaking area, there's this nice little trail and you get to see art pieces, music, instruments. It's really a, a, a camera. Anybody who takes camera or pictures, this is a dream for them because there is just some neat textures and colors. But that's also a part of the, the process that the person may relate to something in here, which will bring some anxiety down. After they've had the experience and they've broken something, who puts together the art? Where does um, we have a few artists. Um, one is my wife. She's the one that delicately uh, collects glass that has you know, some words and some meaning from some people that have been in here and getting through their struggles. We do ask them to leave those struggles with us. And uh, so what we do is we put some things together, what my wife does in different forms, whether it's collage or, you know, uh, making what some would call some macabre like images, but it's to symbolize those feelings are gone. That problem is dealt with. It's dead. And uh, it seems to work and people enjoy it. Now we do have uh, one of our employee, Caleb Hill. Um, he is uh, greatly responsible for decorating the place with his own particular flair and his art and his form of expression really has a soothing effect on people in crisis. What kinds of uh, injuries or um, emotional situations do you feel that this kinds of therapy addresses? You mentioned traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder. If you could sort of rattle off a few areas that you think this this your you know your facility helps it's very childlike when i when i really do think about it from a perspective it's all the things that that may bring you down so for a child it could be a uh, uh, a teacher in school a classmate you know something like that that you're going through some issues at the time um, now it carries on into emotional baggage maybe from a child to uh, as they grow up and through life and things that they didn't realize that they were harboring or holding inside until they got back there. They could have been celebrating a birthday, but while they're celebrating this birthday, 
they could, it could pull up emotions in that they're mourning the loss of, let's say, a mother or a grandparent or something during this time that's special. So no matter what, it seems to really pull the weeds up out of our garden, to say. What age group, what age limits, what's the sort of criteria for participating? Well, when we first started, we, uh, we didn't think this would be good for kids, but then we started to learn how beneficial it was in this recipe that we got that kept things safe and monitored. I have parents bringing their, their children or young adults in that may have some issues and some things that get out, and it works surprisingly well. Uh, I even have counselors that will come in and, and bring a family or uh, a young adult, a child, just to get work through some things in a positive way. I've actually, since I found you all on the internet and that was, I was searching out things in Salisbury, um, I've learned about other places around the country. This is it's a new, for, not new idea, but people are catching on to this. This is something that's growing within communities. Can you speak to that at all? Yeah, I can. Um, and it's maybe the way, when I originally went into this with me and my wife, I said, Look, who doesn't like to break bottles and dishes and plates, you know? But I think what a lot of people or these facilities aren't thinking about is uh, what the benefits are and focusing more on that. The cathartic sort of... Yes, thing. and we didn't realize it. We didn't realize it. We were, we were, we were almost prepared for this through, through our life and our life experiences. Sorry. We doing okay? Doing great. Doing great. So happy. <laughs> yes. Hey guys, dying is easy. Living's hard. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to remember now where I got thrown off. I'm trying to remember where we were. Is there something you want to sort of say to me? Because it is so different. Oh, man. And it's out of our public television sphere. Yeah. Okay. So. For me and for our lot, as, as much as I know us three are, are very honored to be with you and Thank to you. be here. But, so we'll have to focus on the art and whatever. But is there something you could sort of like reach out to the audience? You might you have to look at me. But yeah. um, sort of say, you know, this is not, it's not that it's not scary, but it, you know, this is a place to relief, for relief. Hmm. It's an outlet. Is there something you could say to our audience to sort of, because it's going to look different. Oh, wow. Uh, can I stall just for a second? Yes. Yeah, just let me stall just for a minute because this is one of those opportunities that you, you wish that there was, there was that, that word that will reach that particular person. Not the masses, but that particular person. Yeah. So my phone I'm going to click that yeah, too. Thank the, you. Sorry about that, guys. Sure. That's not usually what we do. Um, there's I clear somebody my mind. out there that, that would just like to try, you know, getting, yeah. it, getting it out. It's well, a safe space. Yeah, and I, I think for the most part, um, come, let it out, whatever it is that's holding you back. Um, time to clean off the shelf. It's springtime, too. Great way to, you know, just to sweep out all the dark places that may be inside of us. And it seems to make room for more positive things. Like art and music. <laughs> Great. Perfect. That was perfect. Thank you. Anytime. What do people to get to take home? Don't do it if you really speak up because I can't. Okay, I've got to stand closer yeah, to the yeah, mic. Okay. The other mic broke on us Thank today. <laughs> okay. After the experience in the mm -hmm. bag, what can people take home with them? We sell a variety of different vessels and shadow boxes that people can either take home and fill or we'll fill them for them. A lot of times it's just a good reminder that they've conquered that thing that they've been holding on to for a long time. And it really takes that pain and repackages it into something that's beautiful that they can enjoy. That was lovely. What is that? I don't know. Actually, I'll tell you what, we've done this one because I like that, didn't you? That's great. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Well, that's because really well, we're, yeah, mm -hmm. we're here. Yeah, because we're here. Hold it, hold it pretty steady. Yeah, just hold it. We're doing a close up on it. That's great. All right, we're good. All right. Okay, dude. All right, and the jewelry. 
The jewelry, we have a local artist that makes all the jewelry. So it's repurposed out of some of the pieces that are in the back. And these are made to order. So they can either pick a piece that's already made or if it's something that came from the actual collection that they threw, we can make it into a piece for them. Um, this one just has the glass which has been tumbled, almost like a sea glass effect. And you put glass within glass, I can see here. Yeah, the glass within glass. So uh, just another mode of vessels that people can take home and enjoy, put on the shelf and, and see that it can't hurt them anymore. Do people bring you in particular items they want to sell? They do. Uh, a lot of people will bring in something um, or maybe a piece even speaks to them in the back. We had a gentleman, uh, we brought out a salt and pepper shaker for him and his girlfriend to break and he related that to his mom who had passed. It happened to be the same China collection that she had and he asked if he couldn't break it and if we would fill it with glass for him. So he felt like his mother was here with him that day to celebrate his birthday. So people come for all different kinds of reasons. All reasons. And usually even if they come for fun, they leave having some kind of meaningful experience. Just tell us just talk, talk about the jewelry again. So we can take a piece that's either already back there and broken or a piece that somebody has shattered and make it into a custom piece for them. But we also sell pieces that we've tumbled that uh, people can enjoy without uh, you know, the harsh edges. That's great. When you pick that up, how did you hold it? Remember that? When you held it? Something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk. Buttons. I'm, I'm getting goofy here. Uh, if you would talk about that, please. And so we put glass within glass. Uh, it's just another vessel that people can enjoy and, and turn it into art within their home. And uh, since it's in glass, it can't hurt them anymore, just like their feelings. Okay, do me a favor and just put it back on the shelf. When I say go, I want you to just pull it out. Okay. Put it back in. Put your hand away. Okay, take it away. Take your hand away. I'm sorry. Oh, take my hand away? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not clear. Ready, take it away. illustrations or whatever. I don't know the right terminology, I'm sorry. So That's okay. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> you know it. You do it all the time. <laughs> Come over this way. Just a bit. Okay. Ah, perfect. All right, okay. Just tell me when to go. Okay. I'm ready to go. So when people come in, we give them the different plates and bottles. And really, we encourage people to write on them. Uh, getting and visualizing those things that they've been holding on to before letting them go and just kind of watching them disperse into pieces and tackling it really is the key, I think, to them really just to letting it go for, for final. And we tell people, just like you can't put those pieces back together, that thing is no longer within you. It no longer controls you. And we go through the piles quite regularly and pull out pieces that we feel like would speak to other people. So this one's kind of a broken heart and it's made up of a, def a bunch of different pieces from different individuals. And uh, you know, somebody might walk in here after going through a, a divorce or maybe even the loss of a spouse and, and see that and feel like, wow, I'm feeling exactly like what's on that plate or I feel like a piece of my heart's missing. And just that knowing that they're not alone uh, can just bring them a big sense of relief. Oh, that's the main question. If you're a tree, what kind of tree would you be? Oh. A birch. Why? A birch. Why would you be a birch? Oh, they're pretty. They've got they those lovely birch. And, they, and they're just, they're just, they're papery and they always look and <laughs> see. Like, oh, what's this? You know, yeah. you start peeling off and, yeah. Uh, good choice. Barbara Walters asked that to Barbara Streisand many, many years ago. That was a question. Barbara was like, what the hell did you just ask? I don't know what she said. <laughs> Probably no truth. I never wrote to show you. Also had the artist that did the acrylics and all the graffiti here too. If you want to grab him for a moment since you're running ahead of time, so he should be on this game. Um, it's really healing for him. He started with a piece in the back of the eye, which was a tribute to his mother who passed from addiction, and uh, so that's that's his coping mechanism. 
so. You know, I, I don't, okay guys, Jay, you, my boss, I don't see how that relates. Uh -huh, he, like next door, which is a nonprofit bike recyclery for, for folks that need transportation, he's done pieces for ventilation. Yeah, see, we haven't focused so. on any artist. We just focused on places to come okay. and see art. We haven't focused on mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. where, where, where is that located? So I'll, that may be more something of, you could, I've got a map. Okay. It's not a good map, but it's a map. <laughs> <laughs> I've been heavily marked And on. he would love to take it down there. He's I can't let me out on the map. He's stuck yeah. on it now. Yeah, the two of his pieces are on it now. Okay. Um, that would make, I just, it, you know, I'm not focusing on it. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to keep it as an experience. Mm -hmm. And I don't know many communities that offer yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Especially the youth. Yeah. And, and their focus oh. was oh. to one, have that access. Yeah, it's not focusing on it. not focusing on it. It's 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 not when you try it, you the first couple of throws, it's you know, real good, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just get the hang of it. You, you know, plates you can. Crazy. I'll come up to tell for you. We did that. Uh, my daughter's. Got weddings and I bought, you know, I found a big, they're hard to get, they're heavy as heck. I just would evaluate the, the audience. Start throwing. Jay, have you got <laughs> Jay, have you got us covered? Yeah, everybody's got your glasses on, please. Thank you, Jeff. And roll away. There's Shane. Have a nice Get ready for 
10 throw. Did I go through the motions? All right, put them back. Oh, yeah, you gotta go through the motions. <laughs> All the way? <laughs> Did I say for 10 throw? Okay. For 10 throw. For 10 throw. <laughs> Ready, go. Well, <laughs> here we go, guys, and pretend. I'll pick up one more at least. You don't want to see the same <laughs> <bottom. I> guess. <laughs> Good, we're done. That was great. <laughs> go, baby. Okay. Good job. He's welcoming us. <laughs> All right. That's my buddy, Caleb. I wish you had the bigger sign up here. I think a lot of people will drive by. This is so small. It's a historical district. How are you taking oh, this yeah, district? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's actually you know, But I'm like, I feel like a lot of people yes, pass do. by. Yes, they do. They don't know what it is. No. They don't know. No. It's okay. You can't, you can't oh, see that. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. His car is like the biggest All the best. advertisement <laughs> out here. But she always parks there, so you know they're open. We're recording, so you can keep looking at it. Yeah. Okay, we're blowing away here, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Right. 